it indicates a problem in my country of censorship. This, I think you're seeing much evidence of it now. Much evidence of it now. And that ties into a larger issue now, which is confronting us, which is Ukraine. People don't follow it up. They don't investigate. They don't know the history. Uh, I did, uh, well, I produced, uh, I, I did not direct a movie called uh, uh, Ukraine on Fire in 2014, the year, after, the year of the coup. There was a coup in Ukraine, and people don't know the details. And it's very interesting who was behind the coup. The United States was, and they supported it, and it is a dirty, 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 dirty story. One could say that the whole story follows, it makes sense if you really follow it through. Ukraine has always been used by the United States back to World War II, after World War II. Ukraine was used by the United States because it's close to the Soviet Union and we were out to destroy the Soviet Union and that they served a purpose. We, we, we sent many people, many Ukrainians back to fight the Russians. Many of them were picked up and were, never got into business against working for us, but a lot of CIA activity. Same story here. What? Same story here. If you look into the details, it's a very disturbing story. It seems that the, as we did in Afghanistan, just remember for a second, Afghanistan, Mr. Brzezinski, those of you who are too young to remember, but he was the National Security Advisor for Jimmy Carter. After uh, the Russians went into Afghanistan in 1979, Krasinski, a few, two years later or something like that, finally came out and said, wow, it was a brilliant plan. We sucked the Russians in. It was a plan to get them in uh, supporting the Mujahideen, which he did extensively. We, in other words, we wanted them to come into Afghanistan. That was the reason that we uh, supported the Mujahideen that became a problem after the war with, in, with 2000, 2000. You have to connect these things, 2001 connect all these things through time. We, the same thing happens in Ukraine. It, Ukraine becomes the objective. How do you get the Soviets to make a blunder? You get them to invade Ukraine. Makes the whole world go crazy. And they're going to say, look, the Russians are at it again. They want an empire back. No, it doesn't work that way. It was about NATO. NATO using Ukraine to enter into Russia. Again, and this was a very difficult issue for the Russians. They warned us over and over again about this. They said it was a red line for them. We didn't pay any attention. We acted very arrogantly, and we went ahead and uh, violated every one of those red lines. And then we said finally in that year before that uh, Ukraine would be able to join NATO. That was the uh, prime point. The United States uh, made it very clear that there was no uh, stopping because the United States wants the Russian resources. It's quite a huge, rich country. Very important. So getting rid of Mr. Putin, changing the leadership in, in, in Russia is a crucial policy issue for the United States. It's a major objective, not saving Ukraine. They don't care about Ukraine. They care about destroying the Russian nation. And that's, a no, that's, that's a very serious, serious war point. This is, we're talking about possibly the end of the world, a nuclear war. And the United States has prosecuted that war basically since 19, from 1943 to 1944 to about uh, 1992, when the Soviet Union finally fell. And they resumed that war sometime in the 2000 period. The neoconservative movement in the United States is very strong and very powerful, very secret. People don't realize the extent of power. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, I, I'm just s sketching the outlines of it, but there is a plan here. It's a serious plan, and it still is going on, and it's going to affect all of us. But the people of the world react to the surface movements. Oh, yeah, they invaded Ukraine. Sure. They're trying to protect themselves against what they see as a United States move, again, to destroy the concept of not the Soviet Union anymore, communism is gone, but just Russia itself. And Russia itself has a hell of a lot of riches and resources uh, that we would like to exploit and Wall Street would like to have. 
So that's about that's the gist of it. So when I'm saying uh, your question was, uh, he didn't make it, he did not warn about that. He just said it was a red line. Uh, he never said that uh, he was going to invade or not invade. That was not an issue back in 2017 when I interviewed him. 2017. So it was not an issue. The problem he had there was it was he was worried about it very much so because they were killing Russian ethnics in Ukraine. 7,000 have been reported killed, maybe more. Uh, 